But as you try any other values, I mean our next uh, prime number along, I mean we could either go with x equals 2 and y equals 5, or we could go with um, you know th x equals 3 and y equals 5, so you're sort of hopping along. Uh, solutions are far and few between. Things start to collapse and you're like, oh, this is, not, this is not getting me anywhere helpful at all. And the reason why this is, I think you can sort of gain some insight, not just because you throw numbers at it, but because you can actually try to understand what these two sides of the equation are about, is that if you were to lock in a certain value, like let's say you know x was going to be equal to two, and then I'm just gonna try out all the other values of y, every other prime number, right? If you lock that in, and actually because of this symmetry between x and y, um, it wouldn't matter if you locked in y and y equals 3 and then just tried out lots of other numbers for x, right? As you test out different numbers just by keeping one thing steady and then changing the rest, you will see why the left and the right hand side, at least I think, um, can never be equal to each other after this first solution. They're, the left and the right hand sides, not only do they not equal the same thing, they actually get further and further apart forever as you try different prime numbers. So here's the way I'm going to illustrate it. As I said before, let's consider what happens if x is stuck at two. Right? This is a classic mathematical problem solving strategy by the way. When you've got um, something complicated and there's lots of things changing, just hold one still and then vary a different part of the situation. I suppose it sort of relates to the scientific method if that's something you've learned about. Like you are trying to control um, a situation as much as you can and just, just vary one thing and see like, oh, is this the thing? What, what, what's the effect if I change this, this one thing and everything else is the same and I can observe the effect of changing that one variable is what we call it. Uh, and that's exactly what I've got here. So I'm going to consider x equals 2 and various values for y. Okay. Now I've already tested out uh, y equals 3 so I'm just going to ditch that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to consider y equals um, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and so on. Okay. Now let's have a look here. I'm going to compare the left hand side which is going to be, uh, let's actually just grab this. Nope. don't need all of it. So. I'm going to have, get rid of all these colors, we don't need them anymore, ta-da. Um, I'm going to consider this left hand side versus this right hand side um, when x equals 2. So it's going to be 2 to the power of y plus y and I'm comparing that to y to the power of 2 plus 2. So you can see everywhere that I had those x's here, here, and here I'm just replacing them with twos and then seeing what happens, okay? And I'm going to start, um, oops, various values for y, I don't know why I started, I think I must have said y equals 3 aloud and then uh, wrote it when I didn't mean to, okay? So let's consider what happens to the left hand side and the right hand side, should have given one more row, when I try different values for y, like say for example uh, 5 and then I'm going to keep on going up, okay? Now, even though I have this sort of condition that uh, y and x have to be prime, uh, I, the pattern that I'm going to try and show to you, it's actually a lot more obvious if I include all the numbers, not just uh, 5 and then the next would be 7 and then uh, 11 and then 13. I'm actually going to go in sequence sort of just up by 1. So I'm going to go 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. Because um, there's a pattern I'm sort of looking for um, that I noticed when I was fiddling with this, uh, which is going to be easier to see if you have all the numbers all together. Let's just go up to 10, that should be enough, okay? All right, now uh, I'm going to start with the left hand side. So I'm going to have 2 to the power of whatever y is and then I'm going to add y, okay? So for this first one here for the left hand side, I've got 2 to the power of 5 plus 5. 2 to the power of 5 plus 5. So 2 to the power of 5 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, um, which is 32. Uh, you might wonder how I know that and that's because um, powers of two are something which people who play with computers a lot happen to know because binary uh, makes things grow and double like that. So I'm going to get 32 plus 5 which is 37. Next one along is to the power of 6, so that's 64 plus 6 which is 70. And then I'm going to go uh, 128 plus 7, so that's 135. 256 plus 8, which is 264. I'm doing this all mentally, so if I get something wrong, forgive me. Uh, next one along is 512, so when you add 9 to that, you get 521. 
And then the last one that I'm going, I think you'll see the point by this, um, by this value. Uh, two to the power of 10 is 1,024. So if you add 10 to that, you get 1,034. Okay, happy times. So there you go, this is two to the power of y plus y, this is the left hand side. And now let's have a look at the right hand side. So this is gonna be y squared plus two. So the first one will be five squared plus two. Five squared plus two, that's 25 plus two, so that's 27. The next one is uh, six squared plus two. This is a bit easier, so I'm only doing one thing to y. So six squared is 36. So you add two to that, you get 38. The next one will be 49 plus two is 51. 64 plus two is 66. Um, 81 plus two is 83. And then 100 plus two is 102. All right, so let's pause right there for a second. Can you see why, like I did, you got to this point and you're like, oh, I, I think I'm gonna stop. I don't think there's any point in me continuing with this, uh, you know, try and identify like maybe later on I'll get a solution. Uh, and the reason is because as you go, uh, let's have a look at the right hand side first. As you go upwards for values of y, you can see the right hand side's getting bigger. Um, because you're squaring a bigger and bigger number and then you add two, right? So you can see the squares underneath there, uh, 25, 36, 49, 64, and so on. So this is getting bigger, um, but it's not getting bigger as fast as the left-hand side is. The left-hand side is growing bigger so much faster, right? Look at this, 37, 70, you're in triple digits already, 135, 264, these guys are still plodding along in double digits. By the time you've hit triple digits down here, you're in quadruple digits up here, and uh, you're, you're, these guys are never gonna catch up to each other, right? You can see they're actually, what we would call this is they're diverging, these two sequences of numbers, getting further and further and further apart. Now, why is this? Well, if you have a think about it, it's because um, the left and the right hand sides, the, the sort of core of each, of, each one um, is, is quite different. Um, here, you're squaring numbers. This is what we call, this is one type of what we call polynomial growth. So it's growing faster and faster and faster, but it's, it's not growing that much faster, right? Compared to what we call um, exponential growth. And that's a, a word you might've heard because you know we're living through a global pandemic at the moment, thinking of people from the future watching this and, and wondering like, what global pandemic, right? Uh, we are living through COVID-19 at the moment. And we've seen places where um, case numbers and infections rise, like they, they will get so much faster. There's this very, very steep curve. And it's what we call an exponential uh, growth situation. Now, even though this, um, this thing here, this squaring, this polynomial growth is fast, it will never, it will never catch up to exponential growth, okay? And here's the thing, right? Um, these are all, like these numbers are basically doubling as you go. You can see it's kind of like, you know, 70 is about double 37. 135 is about double 70. Um, you know, 1,034 is about double 521. The only reason why it's not exactly double is because of this little extra bit here, right? If we only had two to the power of y, then it would be exactly doubled as you go along. But because you're adding this extra little bit, they're like double and a little bit, right? But you're doubling, 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 doubling. If I didn't lock in x equals two, suppose I took the next prime number, which is x equals three. You wouldn't be doubling, you'd be tripling every time. You would be starting with three, and then you'd go to um, nine, and then 27, and then 81, and then 200 and, uh, huh, 81? Uh, 243, 729, it grows even faster. Uh, and so, you know, that kind of diverging that I explained before, um, it's gonna happen even faster and even more obviously, right? So this is my way of sort of concluding um, by seeing these numbers and sort of understanding, oh, okay, this, this pattern is gonna continue. This one's gonna sort of race off and this one's increasing, but, but not as fast, right? This is how I'm concluding. I, I don't think this is ever going to um, sort of come back together. It's never going to collide. And you can try it out with any base is what we call this. X equals two is that base number down the bottom. Uh, like I said, try it with any prime and you'll see the same kind of divergence happening. Um, X equals two, Y equals three seems to match up. Now I should point out, um, I've, I've tried out numbers. I've sort of done this substitution. And you might say, but Eddie, you know, what about, you could try numbers forever. That's the thing about numbers, there's an infinity of them. So you could try out different combinations um, and never get to the end of them. Um, one of the ways, one of the more technical pieces of mathematics that I could use um, to actually prove that for no value of X or Y, these are ever going to you know, collide again, is called calculus. Calculus is the part of mathematics that talks about how quickly or how slowly things change. 
change. Uh, so it's about, for example, how, how quickly these numbers rise or how quickly these numbers rise and the fact that they will not ever um, rise at the same rate or, or one will never catch up to the other. Um, and that area of mathematics is one I've been trying to avoid talking about in this video because I want it to, to be relatively simple to understand and comprehend. But let's just review, right? When we come back to our original question, um, how many solutions are there? Well, I think that if you, if you are allowed for X and Y to be the same number, then infinitely many solutions. X and Y, um, so long as they are equal to each other, um, you will get this kind of pairing up situation on the left and the right hand side. But if you say X and Y have to be unequal, they have to be distinct from each other. I believe that X equals two and Y equals three is the only solution you'll find. And no matter how far you go for larger and larger values of X and Y, um, the left hand side and the right hand side, we want them to match up, but they will never match up. They will get further and further apart forever and ever. So I hope you liked this little um, sort of foray into an interesting area of mathematics. If you have another way of solving this, I'd love to hear about it, but I hope that made sense to you and that you learned something as you listened and watched.